2019 Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. I'm going to ask you to please join and rise in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We do roll call. Karen Shoup, here. James Hebert. Here. Rudy Kieran. Here. David Bork. Here. Melinda Torrance. Absent. Okay. So first we have the approval of the minutes from the May 8th, 2019 meeting. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes? I don't know if anyone has any concerns, comments? I have no questions. Motion? I'll move to approve the minutes from last month's meeting as presented. Second. A uh, question, does that include the um, findings of facts? No, we'll do, we're going to do separate. that separate. Yep. Okay, thank you. So I'll second that. Okay. No, Mr. Karen, are you willing to vote on the minutes? I'll abstain. Okay, so I don't think we can approve. If we don't, we only have three. Right. All right, so. We'll wait till next month. Uh, next month, yep. All right. right, so then we should we table the approval of the 243 Pine Point Road? I would say yes. Facts? Uh, okay. I would bring up a point though that there are two typos on okay. here and I'd just like to make a motion to amend the, the minutes to correct the typos and I'll tell you where they are. Uh, the first one's uh, paragraph two, line six, uh, in the middle of that line the word she it should not be there. Is this the minutes? No, it's in the uh, in the finding of facts? Yeah. The, the finding of facts. Section 6. Yeah. So that... Uh, oh, mm -hmm. Second mm -hmm. paragraph, line 6, the word she needs to be removed. Yeah, Second I point that out. Too. That's in the minutes. That's the minutes. That's not the... That's why I asked whether yeah, that's included that's the in the minutes. minutes. This is the decision. That's what I thought yeah. you were talking about. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So the minutes need to be... So the minutes, minutes need to be amended to show that... So, okay. The, the word she should be omitted. And the second one... Oh, I is, already got those earlier. Yeah. I, I noticed them. That, well, all right. Well, just, just to make it's sure. Three. The second one is in paragraph three, uh, line board. four. B-O-A-R. It should be board. Okay. Oh, that's all I have. Thank you. Yep. I read them. Okay. So we'll, we'll uh, hold those for the next meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, <laughs> so we have one appeal tonight, appeal number 2660, which is a limited reduction of side yard by Driftwood at Higgins LLC, which is 8 Ocean Ave, Assessor's Map U002, Lot 106. And we have Good question. Does it sound like it's on? I don't... I don't know if the mics are on or not. I'm not sure. Can we have somebody from the tech check mics? They're all on. They're all okay. on? Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, uh, so first I'm actually gonna ask Brian to introduce the appeal and give us a little background information from the town here. Okay, so the, uh, um, this is, uh, as you said, a limited reduction of yard size variance. Um, we received the application last month. There was some technical issues that hadn't um, been discovered before. The applicant has since revised the plan, and it's what you're looking at tonight. Um, limited reduction of yard size um, variance, as, as you may recall, is um, available to those properties that were in existence as of July 3rd, 1991. Um, and it, will allow um, the applicant to apply for up to a five foot reduction on side and rear yard setbacks, uh, as well as a 10 foot reduction on front yard setbacks. Uh, what, you, what you're going to hear Mr. Wilson describe tonight is a, a remodel or a renovation project as well as a small addition uh, or a moderate sized addition to the rear of the structure with a side wing added to that. Uh, and there are some other components that he will describe to you. Okay. Okay. I'm Walter Wilson from the Design Company. I'm representing Denise and Michael Stern in the application to the Zoning Board for these two limited reduction of yard size variances. Um, 
the owners propose to renovate the existing structure and add a rear addition. Uh, and the existing building is a two-story residence with, which was constructed in 1935, and the rear addition will also be two stories. The ridgeline height will be the same elevation as the existing building in accordance with the CDCR1 character code limitations. Um, the existing building is located approximately eight feet from the easterly prop property line and the existing second floor knee wall is four foot two inches high and a pitch roof rests on that top plate of that wall. Currently this wall does not have any windows due to the limited wall height. So we're proposing the placement of two gable dormers to be located on that side wall. The dormers will allow for the installation of windows that will satisfy the building code requirements to regress. Uh, Article 4, Section E74 in the CDCR1 character code states that the dormer must be set back at least 12 feet from the vertical plane of all side lot lines regardless of the setback of the building. In order to install an egress compliant window, the face of the proposed dormer wall will have to be located uh, on the plane of the existing wall below. The existing building setback is approximately eight feet to the property line and this will result in the need for the variance uh, to uh, install the dormers. Uh, the second variance we're looking for uh, is on the rear addition, a first floor fireplace on the westerly side wall. The fireplace extends two feet from the building wall. Uh, due to the property line angle, the fireplace will extend into the eight foot setback and the variance is requested. The two variances are, uh, the variance number one for the dormers required 12 foot setback, proposed eight foot, so we need a reduction of four feet in order to put the dormers in. And the variance for the fireplace, the setbacks required eight feet, and the proposed um, fireplace would be six foot four inches from the line, we're requesting a one foot eight inch variance. So that's the two things we're looking for. All right. Good. I don't know if the board has any questions right away, but I'm going to dive into the <coughs> criteria here. Sure. Okay. Number one, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot was vacant, non-conforming lot of record. According to the assessor's records, the existing building was constructed in 1935. Number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. The requested variance for the second floor dorma, variance one, is necessary in order to satisfy the building code requirements for egress windows and bedrooms. The requested variance for the fireplace number uh, variance two is necessary for the construction of an exterior wall fireplace, which requires a projection of two foot to accommodate the firebox on the vertical flue um, going up to the roof. Uh, each reduction request is reasonably necessary to permit the owner of the property to use and enjoy the property and to satisfy the building codes. Okay. Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Uh, variance one, which is the dormers, uh, due to the location of the existing building on the lot, the proposed dormers cannot be built in conformance with the required setback of 12 feet that is specified in the character ordinance in order to get the egress windows installed. Uh, variance two, the construction of an exterior wall fireplace requires a masonry projection from the face of the wall of two feet in order to install uh, the wood burning firebox on the vertical flue. The building wall exceeds the required eight foot setback. However, the masonry work will be within the eight foot setback. Right. Okay. 
Number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. The requested variances will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. The dormers are, uh, tip are a typical component of many of the properties in the CDCR1 zone and exterior masonry fireplaces are common in the district. Number five, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requi required so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. No construction is missed out. Okay. Pretty straightforward. I don't know if the Board has any questions at this moment. I guess so the only feasible location for the vertical flue is on the exterior of the house. You couldn't do it inside? No, because uh, the space that we have to work with on the second floor of the expanded area is uh, limited in size. There's no room to put the flue in the chimney and the fireplace in the middle of the addition without com completely compromising the floor space of the addition. Okay. Right, and my understanding is you, you reworked this whole plan to try to come into more conformance, and so this is kind of what was left here was the fireplace kind of butting out. Uh -huh. uh, I have a further question regarding the uh, fireplace. Would it not be practical to uh, have a uh, natural gas or propane fireplace? That was one of the options I proposed to the client, and the client said we are intent on having a wood-burning fireplace <laughs> and do not want a gas fireplace. And would a gas fireplace, whether it be natural or propane, uh, re require a brick, uh, an, a masonry, I should say, uh, structure on the outside? It would require a bump out on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, they're between 9 and 12 inches on the bump out right. in order to get it to fit. Uh, that in itself would also put it slightly over the setback line in order to do that. So either way, we'd be in for the for a variance approval on it because of the setback line. Is there any like way I the said, building that could? Was a, that oh, was sorry. A possibility. The owners said no. Yeah. Would Would it be possible to uh, uh, limit the size of the expansion in order to stay within the uh, required eight foot setback using a natural gas or propane? Uh, flu, if it, whatever it's called, coming out of that wall? Well, like I said, there is not a whole lot of room in this expansion mm -hmm. uh, to do those things. And if we shorten that addition up the extra foot or whatever it's going to take to do it, it, the size of the room is such that every foot is, you know, not wanted to be given up. And as you said, the owners are insisting it be a masonry uh, fireplace. Mm -hmm. Well, I got one thing I want to make sure. The building itself meets the setback, mm -hmm. the I frame know. of the building. I it's understand just that. the fireplace that doesn't. I understand. I just want to make sure I understand what uh, is, is being requested here and why. Okay. Well, let's put it this way. If I pull the wall back for the fireplace, it not only pulls back the size of the sitting room, it also reduces the size of the screen porch. And subsequently, on the set, second floor, it reduces the space on the second floor for the bathroom. So, the uh, uh, it's not just a simple few inches that we're going to save. We're going to lose footage in three different rooms to do that. But if it were a, a natural gas or propane, it wouldn't be as much of. It a, wouldn't stick out two feet. It would stick out between ten and twelve inches. Got it. Which Thank you. Still have to have the variance for. I understand. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Any? Um, I'm going to open it up to the public. If anyone has anything they'd like to say at this time. And I'll close it to the public. And there, so, there were no letters or uh, yeah. written. Down. Sorry. So there were no letters, no emails, no phone calls in regards to this. That's good. Um, so now we're going to go through the criteria here with the board and discuss them. Finding some facts, let's find some conclusions here. 
Um, so we have number one, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is required was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. Um, so far the applicant has stated that the town records indicate that this is in fact true. Mr. Hebert. I concur. Um, he's provided the information that the assessor's office records indicates it was constructed in 1935. Madam Chair. I'm brought up the assessor's record in front of you now on the screen. Perfect. Year built, 1935. There you go. Um, I don't know if we need to... uh, yeah, no, no further comments. Thank yeah. you. No further comments. Okay. All in favor of number one being that? Number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. So as the applicant already said, um, you know, it's not unreasonable for people to want to have dormers or windows on the side of their house and, um, and to have a wood-burning fireplace. Uh, that might not be what I want at my house right now, but that's what these people want and that's what a lot of people have. Mr. Hebert? Um, I'll say the uh, applicants referenced building code requirements uh, to have means of egress out the second floor, which the dormers will provide. Um, and as discussed earlier, natural gas, propane versus fireplace, you'd still have to come for us with, for a variance, uh, excuse me, for a <clears throat> limited reduction in yard size. So, and the difference between the two is inches, so I, I don't really see an issue with this one being met. Um, should we be addressing each variant separately? I'm not sure if the board wants to, or Brian, Mr. Longsley, but should we, I feel like, I, I, do you feel like we should break them down? I, I would like the board I, to pick I them. think we should. You should? Okay. I agree. Well, I, should I'd like to do that perhaps then. start with the dormer yep. and then go back and right. do the same thing with the fireplace. Perfect. Um, let's go through and just comment. But, but rather than backtrack through. Right. Take comment them A on, and B, yep. each, each one. Yeah, so just comment on sure. each one if you can. Uh, and separately on each one. Um, again, I, I don't see an issue with adding the dormers on this. Again, as stated, um, building code requirements, means of ingress, uh, that's fine. Uh, with regard to the fireplace, variance number two, um, again, as I stated, we're talking inches, whether or not it's you know gas propane or... Uh, or an actual fireplace, so I don't see uh, at, with this sort of distance. We're not, you know, we're sort of splitting hairs here, so I don't have an issue with this one. All right. So, uh, in, in regard to the uh, the first part of it, which is the dormers, mm -hmm. uh, I see that as being essential, given the fact that uh, clothes require egress, uh, and uh, because of that, it does make sense you know, to have these dormers installed. Um, and in addition to that, the dormers are certainly within character of the neighborhood. Uh, but the, the key factor for me is, uh, is egress. Uh, as far as the second one, fireplace, that's strictly a want issue as opposed to necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property. Uh, I don't really see that as being something that's necessary in any way. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I would be concerned that, uh, you, know, it, you know, it doesn't really necessarily meet the criteria that we're looking for. Mr. Karen? With regard to the uh, request for the variance one and the dormers, I agree that the egress for these proposed bedrooms is a necessity and it does fit within the existing character of the neighborhood for the variance two, uh, which would be the extension for the fireplace masonry build out. I do feel that it would be uh, reasonably necessary to permit uh, the owner to use the property and enjoy it um, in essentially the same manner in that uh, regardless of the type of uh, flu or uh, fuel, um, a similar variance may be required in its current uh, proposed design. Okay, um, I agree. You know, the dormers, the, the, the egress is necessary. They're trying to be in conformance with the code requirements um, in regards to the fireplace. You know, I 
think they have its main. I think everyone wants that fireplace, and uh, it's not. I think it's reasonably necessary and it's essential to most Mainers, and not unreasonable for them to want that fireplace. Um, all in favor of number two being met. Oh, sorry. Um, two A. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, two A being met in regards to the dormers. So we're going to vote well, in favor me. of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're unanimous. And then to B in regards to the fireplace. Well, we have three and then against. No. Okay. Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. We discussed the dormers. The building is already there. There's not really many options. They're trying to be in conformance. So that doesn't seem that has been met in regards to the fireplace. Um, again, I think we went through and we said that this application, he actually came last month and he did a lot of reworking. And um, they've tried to rearrange it to, I think, come into conformance as much as they can when it comes to the fireplace. Um, Mr. Hebert? Uh, with regard to variance one, the dormers, um, again, the uh, the applicant has stated that just due to the location of the existing building on the lot, and this is the case for most, if not all, the other buildings in this zone, um, that it, you, above all else, egress and life safety is sort of the prime, the number one consideration when building uh, expansions and renovations to these buildings. So. Um, the fact that this is coming, um, this is going to be meeting code requirements for egress, I, I don't see an issue with this one. Uh, variance one. With variance two, uh, with the construction of exterior fireplace, um, regardless if it were, as Mr. Karen said, if it were propane, if it were natural gas or wood, uh, you most likely may most likely have to come before us anyways, regardless for a variance. Um, so I don't see an issue with uh, this one either. Uh, regarding the uh, <clears throat> the dormer, uh, this is already a non-conforming uh, setback on the building itself, and it falls within the the lines of that wall. Uh, therefore, I really don't see any issue, and this is the only practical way of putting a, a egress, a method of egress, sufficient. Uh, you know, to, you know, to, for to be safe. Uh, so to me, that, that makes perfect sense. This is the most practical way of uh, accomplishing the, the egress portion of it. Uh, so uh, I think that one uh, certainly does make sense. Uh, the, uh, the second one, um, it, again, I just fall back on the issue of, uh, I don't really believe that a fireplace is needed. Um, this is more of a want, and I really, uh, I just can't agree with uh, the necessity for, for having this as a, as, a, as a point of issuing a variance. A variance should only be issued uh, when there are substantial reasons for doing so. And in most cases, we should be saying no uh, to request for variances where that does not exist. So I'm not in favor of that. With regard to the first variance, as um, Others before me have already spoken. Due to the existing nature of the building and its location, the location of the proposed dormers makes the most sense for the proposed bedrooms and egress access. Um, with regard to the variance number two, the fireplace um, flu build out, um, it would seem, as you've mentioned, that there are other possibilities for the existing site whether the client um, is in favor of them or not. So with that being said, it is possible um, for other, uh, other designs, I'd say. So I, you know, I agree with the board on three with the dormers. Um, you know, the structure's already existing. It's there. You need the windows. Uh, in regards to the fireplace, um, you know, I, I understand that you've, you've been working with the town to try to come in conformance as much as you can. 
Um, you know, you're already restricted with a building that is not in conformance. Um, so I think you guys are working with the best you can. All in favor of three, one, in regards to the dormers being met. All in favor of three, two, in regards to the fireplace being met. That's two, and against. That's two. Okay. Number four, the impact and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. I don't think putting dormers on the side of an existing structure is going to have any effect on the neighborhood. It would be substantially different. Again, they're trying to bring a more to code and come into the Higgins performance there. And I feel the same way in regards to the fireplace. It would be any different than any other building having a fireplace. And the right yard size requirements. Mr. Hebert. Uh, I don't think, with regard to, I'll, again, regarding to the dormers, um, I don't think the impacts of this enlargement um, would be substantially different from any other building in the area or the neighborhood. Uh, again, other buildings have dormers, and this one requires it due to code, so I don't see an issue there. Uh, with regard to the fireplace, um, uh, there are other there are other homes in the area with, with fireplaces and chimneys and flues, and um, I don't think this is out of character or be substantially different or greater, have a greater impact on the area than other homes in that space. Okay. Uh, uh, for this uh, particular criterion, we're looking at whether or not it's in character or not with the neighborhood, and certainly for both the dormer as well as for the fireplace, it is within character. Mm -hmm. So I would say yes to both. Uh, for the first variance, the dormers, I agree that it is in, within character of the existing neighborhood. And uh, as Mr. Hebert said, for variance number two, fireplace, chimneys, also within the given character of the neighborhood. I see no issues with either. Great. Okay. All in favor of 4 1 in regards to the dormers being met? All in favor of 4 2 in regards to the fireplace being met? Okay, number five, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. Uh, the applicant has already expressed that he has not begun construction on the dormers or the fireplace. Mr. Hebert? I agree. Uh, I have nothing to add to this one. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I have no personal knowledge. I'll defer to what to Jeff regarding whether or not this, uh, uh, Brian, excuse me, uh, whether or not this is uh, commenced. Madam Chair, uh, I can concur or verify rather that the construction hasn't started. The applicant has submitted plans for administrative review, uh, which we have con uh, completed, and, and it does pass the administrative review phase, but it, construction has not started. No further comment? Okay. So I'm not going to break down number five. We're just going to say all in favor of number five being met. And that's four to zero. Okay. Um, so should we do a, I guess we should do a separate vote overall. First on the dormers and then on the fireplace, I would imagine. Yeah. So all in favor of the application for the dormer limited reduction of yard size. All in favor? That's four. And then all in favor of the two fireplace application request. That's two. Against? Against. 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 Pardon me. I'm okay. sorry. Yep. That's two. I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> um, So a tie fails. That's how that goes in this. Um, 
so I've never broken down an appeal. Well, I think, I think that the board created a very difficult situation for itself. I think it was wrong to take the two things separately, but that's just my opinion. I think you've created a, you've created a problematic thing. Um, well. Because, well, and I only say that because does the board think that no kind of heating appliance should be should should go in in that structure? Is that what the board's instruction to Mr. Uh, Wilson is going to be to instruct his client that no no appliance on that side of the, the dwelling should be installed? You know, my interpretation here is some of the board members look at these plans a little bit more closely than I may do, and I think they're looking at some of the layout and saying, you know, why can't you push it in? Um, you know, I understand that you're working a lot with the town and with your clients as well, and you are trying to come in conformance. Um, you know, I think it would have been my preference to just vote on this wholly. I do not think any of this is unreasonable. I don't think it's unreasonable to have a fireplace. Um, but I, I can see the pushback from some of the board members in regards to the fireplace and as to why. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm not really quite sure where to go from here. Um, I, my preference would be to vote altogether. Um, I mean, technically there hasn't been a motion to approve the appeal. Just to go back for my understanding clarification, yeah. is there a reason why it was submitted with two separate variances uh, separated? It really right. wasn't. It's one variance. You okay. chose to break it into two separate variances. That's why I think it's problematic. There are two components to the single variance. <coughs> variance you number chose one, to, variance you number chose two. To discuss, the board chose to discuss each component separately. Uh, that's, that's all I'm pointing out. And, and I think finding in the finding of fact, it was brought up that if the board chose to say, okay, the, the, the masonry fireplace too much, go to a gas fireplace, it's still going to come back to the board for a limited reduction. So you've created this sort of circular right. situation. That's why I ask, is the board actually willing to, to say no appliance that projects yeah. out from the building? Is that what the board is telling Mr. Wilson that he must go back and tell his clients? Because that's what it's going to end up resulting. I, I, I don't care one way or the other. I'm right. pointing this out. <laughs> um, you know, I don't find this whole application unreasonable. I, I understand the board's pushback in regards to the fireplace, but I think in the whole picture, um, you know, they're trying to make this property better and more conformance with the properties around it. Um, I think there's really nothing wrong with the fireplace. Um, I sort of feel like we should take a step back and do a vote on this application as one whole. Um, like Mr. Hebert just said, we haven't had a motion to approve this or deny it yet. Um, I'm not sure. Mr. Hebert, if, what are uh, you thinking? If, if I can add just one thing real quick. Um, it, you know, it, generally the, the board is governed by Robert's Rules of Order. We make motions on things and that's considered the actual findings of fact and conclusions of law since there was no official motion on this. We're sort of doing straw polls between each one of these just mm -hmm. to get a sort of take a pulse on what everyone is, which yep. we've done in the past. There wasn't an official motion okay. on this appeal. So mm -hmm. I personally, I would propose that we make a motion, as we have done for all of our applications, um, to do it together as is presented and then discuss and go from there. I do have just a question regarding um, the proper structure of it all, should we make the motion and vote as one combined uh, as is presented? Is it possible to, is it possible to make a second motion afterwards with amendments? You can make amendments to the, to the motion. To the first motion yeah, only? So you would, you, you would okay. make a motion to approve the application as presented. Uh, someone seconds it, and then it goes into a discussion. But then at that point, you can make amendments to it. I, I meant to do this. I meant to do that. Okay. And then everybody votes on it at the end. Thank you. I see a problem here. Okay. And that is that uh, according to uh, town code you know, and case law, uh, if any of the criteria fail, uh, that, that means the entire appeal fails, any single one. 
Right. And uh, so we, you certainly have that, that situation here. We made the decision to separate them uh, based on um, a recommendation from staff. And I didn't, I, excuse me, I did not recommend that you okay. separate them. Well, I stand corrected then. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I seem to recall a memo in which it's, it's suggested that we look at each one separately. I may be wrong. Each uh, criteria, but not right. each component of the I know. variance. Uh, but we, if we, if any single part of it fails, then we need to. Uh, it can't pass. You know, and, and in effect, uh, doing a final vote uh, is really redundant and is prone to error. Uh, if, if we were to pass on the final and, and uh, any of the individual ones failed, mm -hmm. then that's, that would certainly be subject to an appeal. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interpret the breakdown um, loosely. Um, you know, I think we, we had a subset that, unfortunately, because of the quorum that we have today, because of that, one subsection of one qualification the board felt did not meet the requirements um, I do not think that again we're looking at this as one application altogether and we're voting on them individually which doesn't actually affect I think the final vote my inclination and what I'm going to do at this point is to make a motion to appeal the to to approve the whole application as presented as one but I can't make a motion. You, you will entertain such a motion then? Yes. Yes, yes Thank you can you. entertain. I will and entertain I can, that motion at this time. And I will say, oh, uh, so moved. And then I need a second. In, oh, in order, second. Yeah, so in order, so I'll say as a, as a clarification for rule, for Robert's rules, you know, um, seconding, it, seconding it going into the discussion now, now is the chance if you want to vote it down okay. to vote it in, but it still has to be seconded to go to the step. Okay. And did you second, Mr. Kerr? Yes, I did. Okay. Thank you. If, so. if I can add a comment this is mm -hmm. with this, um, I mean, with regard to the, you know, the needs and wants of a fireplace versus gas or propane, um, the applicant stated that without providing an exterior, this exterior fireplace as presented, um, it would reduce the footprint and size of the expansion that they have on this building. It would, it would potentially compromise the second floor and just sort of the, the structural layout uh, from my understanding. So, I, again, try and do um, the amount of work involved and to relocate this elsewhere. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is um, I don't see a large issue with them asking for this because they're going to have to come back for a, a, a request anyways for this setback if it's with a gas or propane regardless if it's wood fired or not and we're talking inches that's just my point I'd like to make a further point and really this is also a question to staff uh, if I'm not mistaken uh, when you're using natural gas or propane you don't necessarily have to then directly through a side wall. It can be vented straight up uh, with, you know, with proper construction materials. Uh, I see this all the time with uh, heaters, you know, gas heaters, whatever. Uh, they, they go straight up, you know, th you know through a, a, an interior wall and then out through a roof. Uh, is this true? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we should be breaking down sort of the structure and things like well, that. I think we need to consider yeah. the application in front of us, and we need to decide individually as a board if you personally feel like they've met the requirements or not. I mean, we definitely cannot be sitting here redesigning their plan. Either you yeah. want to approve the no, plan okay. as it's presented, no, I, I'm just simply or not. If there's an alternative, um, you, you know, know for they the need heat, so I don't think it's unreasonable. Yeah. I'll say respectfully, like I, I see where you're coming from, and we've yeah. come across this before in the past, but we can't. Um, we can't dictate design. We can only give recommendations, mm -hmm. and um, we can only vote on and discuss what is presented in front of us. Unfortunately, we're not able to okay. um, go into different. And that's really what I was this. trying to explore. You know, what would right. be appropriate, okay, right. you know, for taking this forward. So let's rule that out. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Right. Good. Uh, <clears throat> so. If we were to proceed then, and again, we're just in discussion stages on this, uh, you know, the, the motion. Uh, if we were to proceed with a with just one appeal, okay, 
then we could always put conditions on it or amend it as we go along uh, to, you know, to deal with these things as separate components, uh, I would think. So, uh, you know, to the chair, I would ask, you know, is that, would that be in order? To break down the application? Well, to make, to make that either a conditional approval or um, to, to put, you know, to just put the additional stipulations on this with approval. I'm not sure what stipulations you want to put okay. on it. All right. Uh, the, okay, what I'm looking at specifically is to be able to say yes to the, uh, uh, the, the dormer, okay, but at the same time, you know, being able to say no to the, uh, you know, to the, uh, you know, the outside masonry right. fireplace. Right. Because that seems to be where we're stuck right now. And uh, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to find a way to, you know, to get this resolved in, in a reasonable way. Yeah, and again, you know, the, the applicant already did come before us and worked with the town. Their application was tabled, and this was sort of the plan that they came up with the best they could to work with the constraints that they had. Um, I do not see anything wrong with the application that has been presented before us at this time after hearing the discussions we've had. Um, I think it would be a disservice to you know, the applicants and our town residents and taxpayers to kind of bump this back over heating and maybe what could be a foot between a natural fireplace, gas, natural wood, things like that. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has anything else to say. I'd just add a couple comments uh, from my side. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I'm seeing it is, isn't, or the way I interpret the plants and today's proposal isn't as much of a concern of the type of heating fuel, whether natural gas or the masonry. Um, it's the fact it's a new addition, um, at which point the set setbacks and sight lines and um, all of the site constraints would have had to been present to begin with. Um, and to have worded the proposal today or variance in, sec or in a manner that's as presented, um, I think there may have been some awareness to the, the two conditions that are being presented in front of the board. Um, I find it personally difficult to accept um, the request for a variance when that isn't as necessary, given this is a new addition. Unless I can hear some additional or a justification as to um, why it's located where it is with relation to the edge of the property boundary and the adjacent property um, beyond the client's concern of losing a foot on the first and second floor. I mean, I think it's a good point. Um, from for, again, from my from my point of view, um, respectfully, we're, we're we're talking about inches generally, but it's it's uh, it, I guess it is what it is. So, I guess at this point, do we do we just do we vote since we are in the motion? Uh, what are we voting on? Is there are we? Well, right now we're in the. Um, motion to approve appeal number 2660 as presented. Do we have any? Madam Chair, can I make an observation? Yes. I guess you're dealing with, is it going to be one vote for both of these things or two votes individually? Um, if you look at the application I submitted, mm -hmm. I asked for two separate yard reductions mm -hmm. and I laid it out Okay. as a variance one and a variance two. Okay. So I wasn't presenting just one overall picture for a vote. I was presenting it as two separate limited yard reductions. So my application has it as two separate ones. Okay. And my feeling is if you lump them together, the mm -hmm. whole thing may die because of the two-two vote on the 
and then that's going to stall the whole process right. going forward for at least another another meeting or maybe two. Whereas if they were dealt with separately, at least the building itself could be looked at as an approved variance, and then the second variance for the fireplace, if it ends up in two two, I have to deal with that some other way. Right. Okay. I, I really appreciate that. If I may make a suggestion. Yes. So since we're in this motion right now, we can make an amendment to the motion to state that it's only regard to the variance one that's in this application. And I'll that way. That. And, great. So I guess as, uh, as, as that is presented, so this motion for the appeal, uh, the approval of 2660 variance one, we'll state those in the application. And you're seconding that? I am. Okay. Are you also going to make a motion we'll have variance to, two? We'll have to make it. So correct. right now we're on variance <laughs> one, so we'll vote on variance one. Mm -hmm. and Just a technical point. I understand breaking them out, in, but technically it should have been two applications, not one. You, you, can't, you can't submit one application and have multiple phases because this is what you get. Okay, so I, I think understand we, that, we, we can work with that now because I think we can do. Years ago, one job I came in with 21 variances yeah. on one application. No, I think, Mr. Hebert, what we can do is can't we just have a motion and say to approve variance one mm -hmm. as, pre yes. <laughs> well, as presented? It's already assigned a number, and, then we need and this could be A, denied. part A, you know, like that. So, in other words, we could subdivide it. Yep. Correct. So, um, so I will, I will, I will. Uh, so, like, you can't make a motion with a motion. But so, I would like to amend the current motion to state that uh, I move to approve appeal number twenty six sixty, variance one. The dormer is on the eastern side of this building. And I will second that. Um, does anyone? I guess. Anyone have any issue with that? Considering where we are now, um, that's sort of the best way out of this, since it's sort of a straightforward. But do we need to say in the motion that we're not passing the variance? Well, we'll, we'll make a separate motion. A separate motion. <laughs> yep, that would be a second motion. Okay. okay, so all in favor of motion. All in favor of the current motion. Current yeah. Motion. So. Okay, so that's fair and say. So I will move to approve uh, appeal number 2660B, um, variance number two as presented. This is the fireplace on the westerly side. I'll second. Second. So now we're in this one. This is the motion for, um, let's say, part B of okay. 2660. Okay, all in favor? All against. Okay. And I believe That's it. that is our decision. <laughs> I think we got there. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for working with us. That uh, that helped quite a bit, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. So we had a new, I guess, an alternate appointed, a new alternate appointed, and so hopefully um, he will be here and joining us next month, so we won't have more issues anymore. Great. And I don't know if anyone has any comments, concerns, general issues. I, I do just a general yeah. procedural issue, really, and this, this regards to the final overall vote, okay, and getting back to the issue of when you have a you know split decisions, uh, mm -hmm. you know where some of the individual criteria are approved, but uh, maybe one or more that's not approved. Mm -hmm. And we had at, in our last meeting. Okay, uh, it's possible to to have a, a different outcome on the final vote than, than what really you know took place on the individual votes. Uh, and in fact, you know the board could very easily on the final vote vote against something uh, for it in favor either way. You know, technically, it was just the opposite on the individual. Because in order for it to be approved, 
everything has to be approved, each of the individual criteria and the standards, uh, building standards have to be approved in order for it to be passed. So it might be more in order going forward uh, for the chair to entertain a motion, in case, let's say in a case where it was not all approved, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the case last time. Right. Instead of entertaining a motion to approve, it really might be more appropriate to entertain a motion to deny and then to vote on that because that's really where it's at. And that would be more, I would think that would be more consistent with the individual votes. So I think that's something we should think about. Yeah, no, it's definitely okay. something to think yeah. about for sure. Yeah. Um, I think some, you know, it's, it's hard to get very technical up here because then yeah. I think sometimes the applicants and, and people get a little confused. Yeah. And I think it, it is sort of our job to be trained and to already know those things. Yeah, what um, happened last time though, we were in a different room and you know, we, the, I couldn't hear what was going on most mm -hmm. of the time. Yeah. I couldn't keep track of the danger <coughs> votes. And uh, it was more difficult. Here, we, the, the acoustics in this room is better. Right. Uh, so yeah, I think that was part of the problem for me, personally. <laughs> and right. I'm part of hearing anyway, so yeah. That's, I just spent some time thinking about that. And it just, uh, I just want to make sure we don't err. Uh, to a point where we may be uh, sued uh, to the main, the main judicial Supreme Court by a party either the person who appealed or somebody who didn't agree with that. Yeah. You know, it could be appealed very yeah. easily if we were if we're inconsistent in any way. So I think we just have to very you know, whatever we, we do, we just have to be very you know err on the on the side of caution to make sure that we don't. Uh, reverse ourselves. Yeah. I'll, to add to that though, I'll say, you know, making a motion to deny an application, if you vote, if you vote down the motion to deny something, you're, you're not, you, you don't get anywhere. So you say, okay, we're not going to deny it, yeah, but also we're not, that doesn't necessarily mean you're approving it either. So you still have to make an, a motion to approve it. So ultimately, you're going to have you have to have a motion to approve it because the approval of a motion sets them forward in the direction, or it doesn't. A motion to deny it, it stops them where they are. But when you disprove the den the denial, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can go forward. I say technically speaking, like the parliamentary procedure of it. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in the future, when we come across you know multiple variances in one packet, maybe we address it at the very beginning and say. You know, we're going to consider this as one entire package, or we're going to consider this as separate. That way, we can avoid that next time. Okay. It's my two cents. I, I certainly see your point about uh, you know, questions have to be affirmative rather than negative. Right. Uh, that makes total sense, and that is consistent with uh, Robert's rules. So uh, that that makes sense. But again, I think that. Uh, we have a complex uh, vote, you know, especially when we're voting on two different things. Okay. Uh, like last time, we were voting on individual criteria, and we were also looking at performance standards. We took separate votes on that. Uh, it, it, we could somehow, sometimes get lost in the detail. So I think it's it probably coming upon the chair to summarize you know, before we go into final vote, just to say, okay, here's where we, we voted. On the individual, mm -hmm. okay, and that we entertain a motion to uh, approve, as you will, and uh, and that then that we can make sure we're consistent. Yep. It was just <coughs> just covering ourselves, right? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Anyone else? Anything, Mr. Longstaff? Mm -hmm. We have a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Doreen, should we keep the minutes yep. and finding the facts? One yep. sec, Madam Chair. The written decision you need. Madam um, Chair, light's still on. Uh, I think probably should. Okay.